Greetings and welcome to another Pokemon 2019 or Pokemon Journeys anime episode review. This time I'm talking about episode 114, so let's get to it. Episode 114 begins in Ceres Park, where Ash and his Pokemon are training for the Masters Tournament. Pikachu trains with Gengar, Dragonite trains with Dracovish, and Lucario trains with Surfetch. Ash says to his Pokemon that they are doing well, that they are on the right track. Golden approaches Ash saying that it looks like the training is coming together. But Ash says not yet, they can still do better. I need to help them get faster and more powerful. Go wonders what Ash plans to do to achieve this. Ash says that he and his Pokemon will get fired up. This confuses Go, since he expected that Ash would have a more concrete plan. So Go is like, but how exactly will you do this? Annoyed, Ash says, like I said, we will get fired up. So in classic Ash fashion, he does not actually have a plan in mind. Thankfully, he soon receives a call from Professor Oak, who says that Ash should come by the lab sometime, since all of his Pokemon want to, I guess, see him. Professor Oak does not get to finish his sentence, since he is interrupted by Ash, who exclaims, That's it! I know where we can go to get fired up! Of course, it's obvious that his idea is to go train with the help of his old Pokemon, which is what I predicted he would do in my preview discussion for this episode. So the episode cuts to Professor Oak's lab, where Professor Oak escorts Ash and Go to where all the Pokemon are. On the way, Professor Oak mentions that he heard from Gary that Go made it into Project Mew. So Professor Oak congratulates Go, who confirms that he did indeed become a chaser, and he thanks Professor Oak. So Ash's Pokemon then happily rush towards their trainer. I love that Bayleaf is the one leading the charge. She is one of the Pokemon that loves Ash the most, so it's fitting that she would be first in line to greet Ash. Also, this moment made me so happy. Few things can make me smile as much as seeing Ash's old Pokemon again, especially when they all lovingly charge towards Ash to greet him. Bayleaf soon happily tackles Ash, which is adorable. The rest of the Pokemon continue stampeding towards Ash, taking Go along for the ride. Ash and Go are then surrounded by Ash's Pokemon. This is another scene that made me smile from ear to ear. Such a joyous moment. Especially when we get a close-up of Ash's delighted expression as he greets his Pokemon. I also love that Pikachu and the Charizard happily greet each other. These two have certainly been through a lot together, which is why they are such great friends. So it's nice that they greet each other like this. It is worth noting, however, that Pikachu's presence here is a continuity error, since Pikachu was left behind when the Pokemon ran past Professor Oak. And yet, Pikachu is then on Charizard's shoulder in the very next shot. Now it's funny and odd that Givul and the Palpitoad greet Go instead. Go then thanks all the Pokemon for the grand welcome. I love that the Tauros, who were not part of the Pokemon Stampede from earlier, do pass by to greet Ash from afar. I guess that since there are so many of them, this works better than having them also charge Ash alongside the other Pokemon. Also, it is worth noting that for once, Ash does not get tackled by his Tauros. After greeting his Pokemon, Ash sends out his Pokemon Journeys team. Now the episode cuts to the opening here, and I do want to point out that in this episode, the opening is updated once again. Regieleki now appears in the segment that shows Go's Pokemon from the Galar region. This was of course done because Go caught Regieleki in the previous episode. The fact that Regieleki was added to the opening confirms that Go did indeed get to keep Regieleki in the end, just like I thought. This is, like I said in my review of episode 113, crazy but not insane, given the track record of this series. Though this is extra crazy when you consider that this means that Go now owns two legendary Pokémon. So once the episode resumes, Ash says to his old Pokémon that he has something to announce. Ash says that he and his Journeys team will soon participate in a big tournament, called the Masters Tournament where they will win, 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 until they get the chance to battle Champion Leon. 
Ash ends his announcement by saying, which is why I want all of you to share your power with us. Pikachu, Surfetch, Lucario, Dragonite, Gengar, and the Dracovish are then like, bring it on! They are clearly also asking Ash's old Pokemon to share their power. Now while it is cool that Ash wants his old Pokemon to share their power, this is also unfortunate, because it means that Ash won't use his old Pokemon for the Masters Tournament, which is something that I was hoping for. So Ash's old Pokemon respond to this request from their trainer and fellow Pokemon by putting on what is basically a contest performance. With the Fire-type Pokemon using Flamethrower, the Grass-type Pokemon except Snivy using Leaf Storm, and the Water-type Pokemon using Water Gun. All the moves beautifully spiral and swirl around while the Flying-type Pokemon fly around. Gengar then joins the fun by flying around and dancing, while Sir Fetch, Lucario, and the Dracobish cheer. Dragonite also happily flies around. Ash says that he has received everyone's power, while Professor Oak and Go are amazed. Professor Oak comments that the Pokemon are cheering with passion. Pikachu then ends the performance by jumping towards the moves and using Thunderbolt condensed into little darts to disperse the other moves. Again, this was basically a contest performance. Now before moving on, I do want to dissect the moments when Ash's old Pokemon fire off their moves, since there are some key things to note in these moments. First, the Fire-type Pokemon all use Flamethrower, or at least, it looks like they are using Flamethrower. Some of them could be using another move that is similar, like Overheat, Fire Spin, etc. What is worth noting here is that Talonflame is the only one of this bunch that did not know Flamethrower before, so it learned the move off-screen at some point. Or at least, it learned a similar move, because the only Fire-type move Talonflame knew before was Flame Charge, and this is clearly not Flame Charge. All the other Pokémon in this group do know Flamethrower and or a similar move, which is why Talonflame stands out. Moving on, the Grass-type Pokémon all use Leaf Storm, though like with Flamethrower, this could be a similar move like Magical Leaf. However, it's not Razor Leaf, which is the closest move that Bulbasaur, Bayleaf, and Levani know, since Razor Leaf does not shine like this. The reason why I think it's Leaf Storm, other than the fact that it looks like Leaf Storm, is that Sceptile and the Torterra do know Leaf Storm. Snivy also knows Leaf Storm, but like I said earlier, Snivy does not join the other grass type Pokemon here. Unless Snivy is behind them. Since she is so small, it's possible that we just cannot see her. Though I would like to think that they would put Snivy in a place where she would be visible in a moment like this. Therefore, I think that they just excluded Snivy for whatever reason. In any case, if the grass type Pokemon are indeed using Leaf Storm, then Bulbasaur, Bayleaf, and the Levani learned the move off screen at some point. And if this move is Magical Leaf, then they all learned the move at some point off screen. Though Levani cannot learn Magical Leaf, while the others can. Therefore, Leaf Storm is more likely since they can all learn it. Though the anime has had the Pokemon use moves they cannot learn in the past. Finally, the Water-type Pokémon all use Water Gun, though again, it could be a similar move. In this case, it's also possible that they are using Hydro Pump. Now, all of the Pokémon here know Water Gun or Hydro Pump except for one. The only Water-type moves Corefish knows are Crab Hammer and Bubble Beam, but this is clearly neither of these two moves. So Corefish learned Water Gun or Hydro Pump off-screen at some point. Keep in mind, that since Ash does not call for any moves, we don't really know what move each Pokemon is using, so I had to make some educated guesses. But I am fairly confident of my assessment. If I am not on point, then I have to be very close. So after the performance ends, Gengar approaches the Fire-type Pokemon. Gengar was hovering around at the Fire-type Pokemon right before they all used their Fire-type move so Gengar clearly has an interest in the Fire-type Pokémon. Gengar then approaches Infernape specifically and, for whatever reason, Gengar decides to poke Infernape. Since Infernape is surrounded by flames, 
Gengar catches on fire and, hilariously, the flames end up propelling Gengar up into the sky like a rocket. I love that the Fire-type Pokémon are all like, what in the world? While Ash is shocked as well. Gengar is then seen falling towards the nearby forest. The episode then cuts to Gengar who hits a bunch of trees on its way down. Gengar is then hit by thunder and it finally lands on the ground. The Pokémon that hit Gengar with thunder soon appears, an Electivire. Ash and Go soon arrive looking for Gengar. Pikachu notices Electivire and Ash is shocked when he sees Electivire. Electivire's trainer then appears. It is none other than Paul, who says, Oh, so that was your Gengar. Ash is surprised to see Paul. I love that Pikachu and Electivire greet each other like the old rivals they are. Gengar then stands up, but it soon stumbles since it is hurt. Ash stops Gengar from falling, but Ash ends up having to let go right away, since Gengar is still hot from being on fire. Go is surprised by this since Gengar is always cold to the touch. When Go touches Gengar to check its temperature, Gengar is cold as usual. So I guess it cooled down right after it came into contact with Ash. Since it is now cold again, Gengar decides to lovingly embrace Ash, which is adorable. Ash is surprised, because Gengar really is cold. Paul then says that Ash is hopeless, because he can't even understand his partner's condition. Nice to see that Paul has not lost his edge. Ash exclaims that he does understand his partner's condition. Go meanwhile wonders who Paul is. So Ash says that Paul is a rival that he battled against a lot while traveling it through Sinnoh. Paul glares at Go who is intimidated. Go even hides behind Ash. Go comments that Paul is scary and Ash says that Paul is always like this. Ash is fire type Pokemon minus Torkoal and the Professor Oak soon arrive. Now for whatever reason they keep excluding a Torkoal when they show the rest of the fire type Pokemon. In episode 68, all of Ash's fire type Pokemon that reside at Professor Oak's lab appeared, except for Torkoal. Here in episode 114, Torkoal does appear and it does appear alongside the other fire type Pokemon when they all use their fire type move. But now Torkoal is not here, so it was excluded once again. Infernape and Paul immediately notice and stare at each other. Ash then informs Professor Oak that Paul is here. But Professor Oak reveals that he knew this already, because Paul showed up out of the blue on the previous day. Professor Oak says that he actually wanted to surprise Ash with Paul. This might be the real reason why Professor Oak called Ash. Paul says that Professor Oak is the leading authority on Pokemon research, so anyone that wants to learn all they can about Pokemon would visit Professor Oak. Therefore, it is not strange that he is here. Charizard then says that he and the other Fire-type Pokemon will go train with Gengar, who happily accepts. So they all leave, though Infernape stays behind. Pikachu then says to Ash that they should go help with the training. Ash agrees, but Paul stops Ash, saying that Ash should let the Pokemon handle the training, since that is what this place is for. Professor Oak then leaves, saying that he will watch over the Pokemon, since Ash surely has a lot of catching up to do with Paul. Ash agrees. Paul then tells Infernape to go help with the training as well. Infernape decides to listen to Paul, and Ash says to Infernape take care of Gengar. Infernape then leaves and I love that Infernape picks up and carries Professor Oak who was lagging behind. Go is surprised because Infernape listens to Paul as well. Ash says that this is true and that this is due to the fact that Infernape was Paul's Pokemon. This shows that Paul now acknowledges and accepts that he was Infernape's trainer and that Infernape has forgiven Paul, showing that they both have matured. Ash then gives Go a summary of Infernape's history, though this happens off-screen, since we instead get to see reanimated flashbacks of said history. Go is amazed when he learns of Infernape's history, and Ash says that Infernape really has become strong. Pikachu and Grookey then approach Electivire, since Electivire is moving its tails, which Pikachu and Grookey find amusing. Grook even tosses its stick, which Electivire catches with its tails. This adorably makes Pikachu and Grookey clap. Paul then tells Electivire to go play with Pikachu and Grookey, 
this shows just how much Paul has softened up. Since I never thought I would see Paul tell one of his Pokemon to go play with other Pokemon. Golden notices that Gibble and the Palpitoad are once again being affectionate with him. Ash comments that Gibble and the Palpitoad have really taken a liking to go. I do wonder why, since there is no clear reason. This just sort of happened. The episode then cuts to Gengar and the Fire-type Pokémon who are in a rocky area. It is worth noting that Torkoal is also here, even though it was absent in the forest. I seriously wonder if the writers just forget Torkoal from time to time. So Infernape and Gengar are training together, while the other Pokémon watch. Infernape and Gengar both Shadow Box. It is worth noting that Infernape is using Fire Punch here, so it learned the move off-screen at some point. Eventually, one of Gengar's punches ignites momentarily, suggesting that it is about to learn a new move. All the Fire-type Pokémon except for Infernape are surprised by this. They coat themselves in flames and they roar, like yeah, that's the way Gengar, use fire as well. Infernape then coats itself in flames as well, and it starts to bump its fists together, while telling Gengar to do the same. Gengar mimics Infernape and the clash of its punches spark flames, like when you try to light a fire using stones or flint. Now at this point I thought that Gengar would learn Fire Punch, for obvious reasons, but Gengar actually ends up learning a different move. The episode then cuts to Ash's other Pokémon. Lucario trains with Heracross, Buizel, and Halucha. Meanwhile, Sir Fetch trains with Oshawott, Sceptile, and Bulbasaur. It is worth noting here that the leaves on Sceptile's arm light up, and it fires off several glowing leaves. This is clearly not Leaf Storm since Sceptile only fires off three leaves total, and it is not Leaf Blade since it is actually firing off the leaves, so this is likely Magical Leaf. This proves what I said earlier, that we can't really be sure of what these moves are unless they are referred to by name. So, we then see that the Dragonite flies around with Noivern, Unfessant, Staraptor and the Swallow. Next, we see that Dracovish and Glalie are under a waterfall, which could be some sort of training, since standing or sitting under a waterfall almost always means training of some sort. Meanwhile, Kingler and the Corefish play together, which is fitting. Snorlax and the Crocodile take a nap, while Totodile jumps happily on Snorlax's belly, which is adorable. Noctowl, Livani, and Gliscor also take a nap. I have to say that it is so, so great to see all of Ash's Pokémon like this. The episode then cuts to Ash, Paul, and Glo, who are talking while sitting down out in a field. Torterra and the Scraggy are napping here, while Electivire plays with Pikachu and Grookey. Also, Gibble and the Palpitoad are still with Go. At this point, they have given more love to Go than to their own trainer, which is just wrong. Now Ash wonders if Paul is not participating in the World Coronation series. Which is what we have all been wondering, so I was happy when I heard Ash ask this question, and I eagerly awaited Paul's response. Unfortunately, the response is very underwhelming. Paul says that he is not one for festivities. Now this kind of reasoning, which is badass, cool, and detached, is the kind of reasoning that I would expect from someone like Paul. This reasoning does suit him. However, I still cannot help but feel disappointed, because this reason is so vague, especially when I was expecting that he would have a meaningful, valid, significant, and justifiable reason. So, Ash says that since Paul is not participating in the World Coronation series, they should take this chance to have a battle. Surprisingly, Paul accepts immediately, without hesitation or question. He simply says 3v3, no substitutions. So it's clear that Paul was hoping to battle Ash. Ash accepts Paul's conditions, though Paul adds another condition. Ash can only use Pokémon he will use for the Masters Tournament, meaning his Pokémon Journeys team. Ash accepts this condition as well. And he says that he will gather all the Pokémon. He then runs off to get his Pokémon. 
Now while I understand why Paul added this extra condition and I am okay with it, I also think that it is a shame that Ash won't use his old Pokemon. It would have been very cool to see him use some of them instead. Infernape would have been a great choice since Ash is facing Paul. So the episode cuts to Gengar, the Fire-type Pokemon and the Professor Oak. Gengar and Infernape are still training together while surrounded by flames. The other Fire-type Pokemon and the Professor Oak simply watch. Eventually Gengar musters its power and it unleashes 9 orbs of purple fire. At this point I of course realized that Gengar did not learn Fire Punch. I assumed that instead it learned Will-O-Wisp. Professor Oak nods happily when he sees that Gengar successfully learned a new move, while the Fire-type Pokemon are surprised. Ash soon arrives calling for Gengar who is surprised, and Gengar ends up firing Will-O-Wisp towards Ash accidentally, though Infernape saves Ash by punching and kicking the Orbs of Fire. Gengar then happily embraces Ash, who embraces Gengar back. Ash then says, Gengar, that was Will-O-Wisp, wasn't it? Confirming that yes, this is Will-O-Wisp. Professor Oak informs Ash that Gengar was able to learn Will-O-Wisp because of the advice provided by Infernape and the other Fire-type Pokemon. So they are good mentors. Ash then thanks Infernape and the other Fire-type Pokemon, who are all happy. Now it is worth noting that Will-O-Wisp is the perfect move for Gengar to learn in this situation, since it is a Fire-type move, so it matches the type of the Pokemon that served as Gengar's mentors. And it is also a move that could easily be classified as a Ghost-type move, given that Will-O-Wisps are, in folklore, Ghost Lights, and they are generally attributed to Ghosts. So Will-O-Wisp is the perfect move to have a Fire-type Pokemon teach to a Ghost-type Pokemon. In fact, most of the Pokemon that can learn the move are either Ghost-type or Fire-type, and most of the Pokemon that have used the move in the anime are Ghost-type Pokemon. So Ash and Paul get ready to battle near a lake, while Professor Oak, Go, and all the Pokemon watch. Ash and Paul then send out their first Pokemon. Ash's first Pokemon is Lucario and Paul's first Pokemon is Garados, a new Pokemon of his. Ash is fired up when he sees Garados, likely because Lance has a Garados, so Ash knows that fighting a Garados will be helpful to him. With both trainers and the Pokemon ready, the battle begins. Lucario starts with Double Team and Garados counters with Ice Fang, which it uses to tear through the clones though there are too many clones and Garados cannot clear all of them. So it uses Hyper Beam next to blast all the clones away, which leaves a massive cloud of smoke. Lucario soon emerges from the smoke behind Garados. So Lucario rushes with Aura Sphere, but Garados uses its tail to catch and trap Lucario. This immediately reminded me of the Sinnoh League, where Paul's Drapion also used its tail to catch and trap several of Ash's Pokemon. This is a nice bit of continuity, since it shows that Paul still uses the same strategies, that he still trains his Pokemon in the same way, and that Ash still falls for the same tricks. Garados then uses Ice Fang to batter the trapped Lucario. It is worth noting that the way Garados uses Ice Fang here, is identical to the way that Lance's Garados used Ice Fang in episode 12 against Leon's Charizard. Lucario soon ignites its aura and it uses Steel Beam to hit Garados, which allows Lucario to break free. At this point I think that Lucario igniting his aura is like going Super Saiyan. After breaking free, Lucario's aura dissipates, though it soon ignites again. Lucario then roars and its fists glow silver. Ash is shocked and he wonders what is going on, while Paul smiles confidently. I guess that he knows what's happening to Lucario or this is what Paul was going for. Ash says, Lucario, is that? While Paul says, come on, showing that yes, he was hoping to push Lucario to get stronger. So Ash calls for bullet punch revealing that Lucario just learned the move. Lucario charges towards Garados who counters with Hyper Beam. Lucario delivers a barrage of bullet punches that find their mark, 
but Garados still fires off its hyperbeam. This leads to a massive explosion. Now it is worth noting that Ash shielding himself from the blast of the explosion, while Paul just stands there like a badass, is another callback to one of their previous battles. Some things just never change. So once the smoke clears, it is revealed that Garados was knocked out, and that Lucario is still standing. I love that Heracross, Weasel and Halucha cheer, since they are the Pokemon that trained with Lucario. Ash then withdraws and thanks Lucario. He also says that Bullet Punch was awesome. It is worth noting that just like Gengar, Lucario learned a fitting move, since Bullet Punch is a skill type move. But since it is a punching move, you could also classify it as a fighting type move. So it is perfect for Lucario who is both a steel type and a fighting type Pokemon. Also I wonder what move Bullet Punch replaced. My guess would be Steel Beam, since it is also a steel type move. And Lucario used it just before learning a Bullet Punch. Meaning that maybe Steel Beam led to Bullet Punch. There is also the fact that I seriously doubt that Lucario would forget Aura Sphere and the Double Team. Paul then withdraws Garados and he says, you did well. This is another example of just how much Paul has softened up. And he does do this later with his other Pokemon as well. Go wonders what just happened. And Professor Oak explains that being backed into a corner allowed Lucario's Steel type energy to ignite which is why it was able to activate Bullet Punch. This further proves that Paul really did push Lucario to the limit so that Lucario could get stronger. Ash then sends out his next Pokemon, which is Dragonite. In response to this, Paul fittingly sends out Garchomp, revealing another new Pokemon of his. Garchomp begins with Dragon Claw and Dragonite counters by using Dragon Claw as well. The two of them clash repeatedly, but neither can get the upper hand, and they end up pushing each other back. Ash exclaims that Garchomp and the Dragonite are evenly matched. But Paul says while smiling, you sure about that? And he calls for Stone Edge. Dragonite tries to counter with Hurricane, but it is hit before it can attack. Garchomp then uses Draco Meteor, which rains down on Dragonite. When Paul calls for Draco Meteor, he once again smiles, showing that he is having fun. Dragonite then uses Draco Meteor as well. However, Ash tells Dragonite to charge with the Draco Meteor. So, while surrounded by the Draco Meteor, Dragonite rushes Garchomp. Go says that Ash is once again using his crazy tactics, while Paul is shocked. Also, I love that Swellow, Staraptor, Unfessant, and Noivern cheer for Dragonite. They are the ones that trained with Dragonite. Garchomp uses Dragon Claw to clash with Dragonite. And unfortunately, Dragonite is knocked out. Man, how the great have fallen. Dragonite used to be the powerhouse of the team. It used to be unbeatable. It used to be a Pokemon that Ash could always rely on. Dragonite would always come through for Ash. But it lost to Raihan's Flygon in episode 109. And now, it lost to Paul's Garchomp. So Dragonite has lost twice in a row, which is such a shame. I really hope that in the Masters Tournament, Dragonite will get some redemption. Ash withdraws Dragonite. He says that Dragonite was really cool and that it should rest. Ash then says to Paul, you see that? I call that Kairu Sagun. Ash is referring to the Draco Meteor strategy here. His name for it is a pun. Kairu is Dragonite's name in Japanese and Ryusegun is Draco Meteor's name in Japanese. Kairu ends in Ryu, Ryusegun starts with Ryu, and Ryu means dragon, hence Kairu Seigun. Paul says that this name is lame, which shocks Ash, who exclaims that it's a cool name because he says so. Paul then sends out his third and final Pokemon, Metagross, yet another new Pokemon of his. Ash then sends out his third Pokemon, which is Gengar. I love that the Fire-type Pokemon immediately cheer when they see Gengar. Ash tells Gengar to do its best, since Infernape and the others are watching, and Gengar is like, you got it! Metagross begins the battle with agility, which allows it to keep pace with Gengar. Gengar uses Shadow Ball, but Metagross easily avoids it, with its increased speed. 
Metagross then uses Psychic and it's funny how Gengar is spun and compressed. This reminds me of what Gengar itself would do to other Pokemon with Psychic. Gengar ends up crashing into the ground due to Psychic. Paul taunts Ash by saying, you call yourself one of the Masters 8? If you are struggling against me, then you will have no hope of winning. Ouch. While Paul has definitely softened up, he has not lost his edge completely. Metagross then uses Meteor Mash, which finds its mark, and Gengar is knocked back. But with encouragement from Infernape, Gengar gets back up. Gengar then shows that it is determined to win. Ash says, that's right Gengar, we have everyone from the lab on our side. Let's show Paul, Will-O-Wisp. Gengar readies the attack and I love that Infernape is like, go for it. And all the fire type Pokemon are then like, go Gengar. So Gengar fires off the Will-O-Wisp which finds its mark. Metagross then uses Meteor Mash again. However, this time, Gengar is able to stop the Meteor Mash because the burn inflicted by Will-O-Wisp weakened the Metagross. This is because in the games, the burn status effect decreases the attack of the affected Pokemon. Metagross is a physical attacker in the games, and Meteor Mash is a physical move. Hence why the burn is so effective. Also, this is the first time in the anime that Will-O-Wisp inflicts the burn status on a target and that the burn status decreases a Pokemon's attack. Gengar then uses Shadow Ball to defeat Metagross, so Ash wins. Also, this means that the Dragonite is the only one of Ash's Pokemon that lost its battle, and the only one that did not learn a new move, since using Draco Meteor in a creative new way is not the same thing as learning a new move. So, they really did the Dragonite dirty in this episode, which is just awful. The Fire-type Pokemon all cheer and they all then embrace Gengar, which is cool, and Ash thanks all of them for helping Gengar. Now I wanted to say that it is curious that Gengar took an interest in the Fire-type Pokemon and that they took an interest in Gengar, and that they ended up becoming such good friends. I did wonder why this happened while watching the episode for the first time. But when I was watching the episode a second time for this review, I remembered that Gengar, Charizard, Infernape, and the Pig Knight were all abandoned by their previous trainer. Now the Pokemon probably don't know that they have this in common, but maybe they can sense that they are kindred spirits that carry the same scars, which is what led them to form such a bond with each other. This is even more likely when you consider that the trainer that abandoned Infernape returns in this episode. That Infernape takes the lead when it comes to mentoring Gengar. That Infernape also takes the lead when encouraging and cheering for Gengar. And that Gengar gets to battle Paul while Infernape doesn't. Even if there isn't a story reason why this all happened, it is likely that the writers did this intentionally. Which is great since this adds such an incredible amount of weight and significance to this episode. Since it is an awesome way to further develop Gengar while also providing more meaning to Paul's return and by giving Ash's Fire-type Pokemon a way to leave a mark on the story. And this was all done in a symbolic way that leverages the histories of the Pokemon involved. Also, I wonder what move Gengar forgot in order to learn Will-O-Wisp. It's not Shadow Ball, of course, and it's not Dazzling Gleam either, since Gengar is seen using it in one of the previews for the Masters Tournament. So it either forgot Ice Punch or Sludge Bomb. My guess would be Ice Punch since Gengar gets no stab from it, unlike with Sludge Bomb. And it's also a move that does not share its type with Gengar like Will-O-Wisp. Also, this means that Gengar lost the ability to use Max Hailstorm or Max Ooze, and instead, it can now use Max Guard, which might have some strategic value, but it is in my opinion a downgrade, and the one detriment of Gengar learning a Will-O-Wisp. Golden approaches Paul, and he says that the Pokemon Paul used were all aces of members of the Masters 8. Go wonders if this was a coincidence. But Paul simply smiles, revealing that yes, he did it on purpose. Ash is surprised here, suggesting that maybe he was not fired up when he saw Gyarados because of Lance. 
Now in my preview discussion I did note the significance of Paul's Pokemon and I did say that this is not a coincidence, which means that Paul is kind and considerate. It turns out that this is the case so props to Paul. Paul then decides that it's time for him to go and he thanks Professor Oak for everything. Professor Oak says that Paul can come back anytime. Paul then says goodbye to Infernape while smiling and he leaves. Ash says to Paul that they should battle again someday, but Paul just waves as he leaves. Go comments that Paul is just too cool, which yeah is the truth. Professor Oak then reveals that Paul was offered the position of gym leader, which is why he wanted to learn more about Pokemon. This is of course a cool revelation, but it is unfortunate that we don't get more details. Like what region will he become a gym leader in? Will he get his own gym or will he take over someone else's gym? Who offered him the position? Will he accept the position? Also what happened to defeating Brandon? Does this have anything to do with Paul becoming a gym leader? Though becoming a frontier brain would be more suitable. So many questions that I hope get answered someday. Ash then says that he is glad that he came to the lab, that thanks to everyone he is all fired up now, that he will go all the way and that he will even defeat Leon. All of his Pokemon cheer when they hear this. Ash then says to go, let's go to the Masters Tournament right now. But as they leave, they are stopped by Ash's mother. Ash wonders when she got here and she reveals that she got here part way through the battle. She then says that Ash must be tired from all his battling, so he should spend the night in Pallet Town and that Go should stay as well. Go wonders if it's okay for him to intrude. Ash says that it's fine and he accepts his mother's invitation. Gibble and Palpito then embrace Go, showing that they really like Go. The episode ends with Ash and Go taking a picture with all of Ash's Pokemon. It is worth noting that this is the biggest gathering of Ash's Pokemon thus far, since all of his Pokemon are here except for those he released and those staying at Kukui's house. Also unlike in episode 68 where several of these Pokemon were absent, they all appear here in episode 114 which is so awesome. So overall this was a marvelous, amazing, spectacular, monumental and glorious episode. It was an absolute treat to see Ash's old Pokemon again, especially since none of the ones staying at the lab were excluded at this time. While I do wish that a few of them got more screen time, I know that this is an unreasonable request, since there are so many of them. Therefore I am ultimately satisfied with what we got. I especially love that they helped Ash's Journeys team train. Seeing a Gengar with the fire type Pokemon was especially awesome, particularly given the similarities they share. It was also great to see Paul again, he is one of the best rivals the anime has ever seen, therefore it was amazing to see him return, especially since he got to battle Ash, and Paul helped Ash get better in preparation for Ash's greatest challenges yet. Paul's reason for not joining the World Carnation series was disappointing, and I wish that they gave us more details regarding what Paul has been up to since the last time we saw him and surrounding the fact that he might become a gym leader. But overall his return was still great, significant and impactful, definitely a return worthy of Paul's legacy, especially since we got to see just how much he has grown as a character. The battle was also very good, while it was short, it still got the job done, since it was thrilling and cool enough. It was also great to see Gengar and Lucario learn new moves. Honestly my only gripe with this episode, apart from what I mentioned about Paul is that the poor Dragonite just can't catch a break, which is unfortunate, but this does not detract too much from the episode. It truly was an outstanding, magnificent, awesome, incredible and remarkable episode. It is yet another unique, one of a kind episode in a long list of such episodes that Pokemon Journeys has been putting out recently. Another historic episode that further cements Pokemon Journeys place as one special series. But that's the video, as always, 
Leave your own thoughts down in the comments below, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did and would like to see more like it, then please consider subscribing to my channel. I love Pokemon and I love making videos on both the anime and the games. Also, please consider clicking the links on screen so that you can check out more videos like this right away. Thank you very much for watching and let's meet again in the next video.